On all new Linux distributions there is systemd. Systemd replaces the old upstart or init based way of booting a server, of starting services, of mounting file systems, of logging, log information. Well, systemd, it really replaces everything and that's a reason why many people don't like it. The purpose of this session? I'm not try going to try to convince you that systemd is cool, but I just want you to get around with it. So let's try and see if we can understand what systemd is all about. So systemd is working with units and that's where the fun starts. There are different units. There are service units, there are target units, there are path units, timer, snapshot, slice, scope, swap, other mount, mount, device and socket units. Phew, that is everything on your new Linux system is probably arranged by systemd and backward compatibility is minimal. Now let's start by finding where those units are because as a system administrator you need to know where to find them. So find is your friend. Fi find slash minus name uh, star dot uh, service for example. It's going to give me access to all the service units. Now what you can see here is that there's too much output as always when you're using find but you can see in user lib system d system there's stuff and oops in hang on sys uh, the sysfs you don't care about that uh, etc system d system so user lib system d system Let's have a look there. You can see many services being available. Well, that's not the right way of stating it. There are many units available. And the units that I'm primarily interested in right now are the service units. Because as a system administrator, that's the first thing you want to know how to get around with. So let's do an ls star service. And you can see, well, many nice little service units. Uh, like firewall D, for example, or many things that you might wonder what exactly is this, but also services in the classical sense of the word, like NFS service dot service, uh, like Toon D dot service, and well, probably you will find some other services that you will recognize. Let's have a look at firewalld.service to find out what the service looks like. So vim on firewalld.service. This is giving me everything the service file looks like. Do you remember init files? Those are bash scripts. We still do have a couple of init files in etc init.d. And let's have a look here. You can see there's really nothing left here. But just to give you an impression, this is the network init file. Can you imagine that some people have a hard time reading the content of this init file? Well, basically, I can. So back to the systemd init file. Uh, sorry, the systemd unit file. Uh, like firewall D. There's the firewall D service. It tells me exactly what to do when starting. Exec start user has been firewall D with some options and that is gonna start firewall D. Hmm. Can that really do the same thing as a unit, uh, as a service file in the old configuration? Of course it can, it's just easier to read. And you need to get used to it. Uh, you will find that most services that you're installing on your server, they will have a unit file. And the unit files, well, by default you can find them in user lib system D system. Uh, but you can also put your own unit files in the etc system D system directory. Let's have a look there and try to understand what exactly it is that we find in there. That's not much. And the reason that it's not much is this is because this is the configuration that you've created yourself as a system administrator. 
You can use it to create snap-in files for the maintainer files that are, not, that are in use, lib system, D system. But hey, you don't need to. And it will work perfectly if you don't. So why would you want to do that? I don't know. Uh, so let's move on and let's keep the unit files as they are and let's check on how they work. Uh, the commands to use in systemd is systemctl, that's like system control. It looks a lot like the, the old service command, but the only difference that start, stop, restart, reload and everything else that you can do is put directly after systemctl and not after the name of the service that you want to ma manipulate. So system CTL status uh, gdm.service for example. That's a GNOME display manager. And that is running because I'm in a graphical environment. And here you can see the status of the gdm.service. Hmm. Do you remember what it looked like in the old uh, in the old upstart or init way of starting services? It just told us that the service is running. And here it does, with a lot of details about the service as well. It tells us what exactly is running. It also tells us that the service is enabled. Now you may wonder what is enabled. Well, by enabling service, you put them in the run levels. I shouldn't use the word run level anymore because run levels don't exist anymore. But let's think at it, uh, of it as run levels for the moment. So if it wouldn't be enabled, I could do systemctl enable uh, gdm.service. And that would change the status of the gdm service, which means that would mean that it uh, boots automatically when your server boots. What we can see here also is the process ID, the mean process ID, and we can see that a C group has been created for it. Now, C groups are all about performance optimization, and I'm not going to explain performance optimization in this presentation. I just want you to be aware that they exist. The nice thing of C groups is that you can assign resources to it. Imagine your Oracle database running on your server. Can you imagine that some process is started on your server that has a result that the Oracle database is out of memory, for example? That's nothing uncommon, is it? Well, by using C groups, you can just assign the resources that you want to dedicate to Oracle and the resources that you want to dedicate to the rest of your system. So if you want to assign 90% of memory to Oracle and 10% uh, of memory to the rest of your system, uh, let's do it with C groups. And you know the cool thing? Whatever is happening on your system, and even if Oracle is doing nothing at all, the rest of your system can use 10% of memory only, and Oracle will have 90% available for everything it needs to do. And that is included with System D. Uh, and that, yeah, that's useful. So, what have we learned so far? We have learned how you can. Uh, find the service files. We have learned that the good old init scripts are replaced by service files uh, and we have learned that the systemctl command can be used to, uh, to do everything you were used to when using uh, the service command. Uh, I have shown you systemctl enable uh, I have, uh, and you can probably guess that systemctl disable would take the service off of the run level. I've also shown you systemctl status to show the status of some service file. And you can imagine that systemctl uh, stop uh, gdm.service uh, would stop the service. Now, that's something I'm not going to do. Because GDM, that's basically my graphical environment. And as you can see here, uh, I'm running a graphical environment. So this is not how I want this presentation to stop. That's all for now, folks. Uh, hang on for my next presentation about SystemD, because I want to put some more uh, screencasts on how to use SystemD on modern Linux systems uh, pretty soon. Stay, stay tuned.